Up next, we're very honored to have today Mr. Pariwat Kanithasan, Deputy Director, Payments and Fintech from Bank of Thailand. And I love the topic that he has chosen for us is connecting people through digital payments. Let's give him a warm welcome. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you to the uh, government of Hong Kong and to Cyberport for inviting me here to this vibrant uh, city of Hong Kong. It's great to be back here again. Uh, my topic, as, as mentioned, uh, is how to connect people through digital payments. And uh, this is something very close to our heart because uh, we've been doing this for uh, quite some time now, and we feel that uh, we have been connecting people not only within countries but beyond borders as well, between Thailand and Hong Kong uh, especially. Uh, just one historical background. Um, didn't you know that, that the first bank note in, in Thailand, which was called Siam at that time, was issued by a Hong Kong bank over, over 130 years ago? I mean, uh, this is something uh, that, that um, our ancestors used to do, connecting people through payments even in the pre-digital age. But now, uh, when we are now in, the, in a very digitalized um, era, we have to do something that, that makes things more efficient. And we believe that uh, previously, um, uh, payments was something of a pain. There were uh, quite a number of pain points for people. Um, it was costly, even in Thailand, if you wanted to, to um, uh, send money to, to a friend, within Thailand, it would cost you about six Hong Kong dollar before 2016. So we have um, implemented a new rails called uh, PromPay. Uh, this is a new infrastructure uh, since 2016. Uh, it's convenient, uh, it's free, and um, it's uh, using proxies. So you don't have to use name or, or uh, bank account numbers, uh, just to use the um, mobile phone or um, ID number. You can send money to anyone in the, in the country for free. So this is something that, that we have uh, done. And um, it's user-friendly with multiple use cases. As you can see, uh, besides tran fund transfers, you have e-donations, cross-bank bill payments, pay alerts, and also uh, P2M, so people-to-merchant payments, so, which would mean that you just uh, take your phone and uh, scan the QR code of any merchant. It's merchant agnostic, so very interoperable, meaning that you don't have to care whether uh, the merchant has the same bank as you or not. So um, it works uh, throughout the country, and we have over 9 million merchant acceptance points uh, right now. One more thing is that, that we are very proud of is, is the uh, cross-border uh, P2P uh, transfer from PayPay now linking Thailand with Singapore. So this is the first uh, linkage of a cross-border uh, payment in the world um, done in 2021 20, during COVID. And we are now leader with the first, uh, with a, a P2M um, cross-border QR linkage. Uh, we have now eight linkages with um, countries uh, in the region, including Hong Kong as well. I'll be telling you about that uh, later on as well. Now, uh, PromPay has been very, very successful. We are very happy about this. As you can see, this is the chart by the Bank for International Settlements. Uh, the green chart, the, the green line uh, above here is, is Thailand. We have more transactions per person than any other fast payment systems here in, in, in the um, study here. And uh, that amounts to uh, over 538 transactions per people per day. So um, Thai people uh, uh, are using payments, fast payments, and, and digital payments as a, a, a means of life for, they, for them. Um, we have over 74 million um, registered form pay IDs. So uh, Thailand has about a um, population of 70 million. So this is more uh, registered uh, IDs than, than the population itself. Uh, over 54 million transactions per day. Um, and, uh, but but where, we, where are we in terms of uh, digital versus cash? Uh, I think we have a, uh, some, t some room to grow. Uh, if, you look, if you look at this chart, for instance, um, when we started PromPay, um, only 4% um, um, of, of Thais used uh, digital payments versus 96% uh, used cash. 
Now it has grown to about one third and two thirds, right? But still, um, uh, despite the, the very good numbers here, there's still room to go to promote digitalization uh, as a means of payments. But of course, um, there's also a darker side to it uh, and, uh, and, and challenge, challenges that are associated with digital payments, which I'm to, uh, going to focus here. One of them is, is capacity challenge. This beautiful chart here shows the um, capacity of, of, of prompt pay um, over the course of, of, of several months. As you can see, the, the yellow parts are where it's low capacity, and the red ones are the ones with the high capacity. Of course, the red ones are during the paydays, right? So um, uh, 31st or the first of each month, you have peak capacity. And sometimes you have outages by, by banks or by, by the operator. So we are worried about this. And, and we are trying to find ways to, to uh, address this, uh, telling banks to upgrade their IT systems all the time. And we also use the name and shame method. So we, we post a list of, of banks with the um, average outages uh, per, per month or per quarter so that the people, the customers know which banks have a higher outages so that they, the banks themselves would, would improve, them, their, their, improve their own IT systems. Second, uh, challenges is, second challenges is on fraud. This is something that is uh, not only in Thailand, but also global here in Hong Kong as well. Um, we have had over uh, a quarter of a million cases of reported fraud cases a year. That's a huge number. Mostly it's identity theft and, and phishing. So it's not about uh, attacking the system itself, but um, getting the, the uh, names um, and, and of the users and, and letting them um, transfer the money to, to, a, to a crook. Uh, so we have had so many anti-fraud measures in, in, in place, biometrics, for instance, machine learning. But the most important thing is that uh, financial edu education. So we need people to be aware each time they use the um, um, digital payments to make payments, to think twice uh, be before doing so. Now, um, something that, that is uh, very um, uh, close to us is um, how to uh, expand these digital payments across borders. And this is something that, that we've been doing um, ever since Prompt Pay was created. So um, we now have the largest linkage, uh, linkages um, in the world where you can have QR payments and one remittance uh, through to Singapore, as I mentioned. And um, again, why are we doing this? Uh, it's because we try to address the pain points of cross-border payments. It, it used to be uh, expensive. It, it used to take time. Uh, if you are a merchant, you're only uh, able to accept credit cards or cash uh, and nothing else. So we are trying to address these pain points to achieving cost speed, um, access, and transparency as well. You know, you know what um, uh, FX rate you're going to pay when you do the uh, QR payments, right? So when, when you come to Thailand and, and pay uh, using your FPS in, in, in Bangkok um, at, at, at prompt pay, uh, at any of the 9 million prompt pay uh, acceptance points, you know the exchange rate between baht and Hong Kong dollar. Uh, uh, at, uh, and you don't have to wait for the um, a credit card company to, to, to send you your bill, right? So uh, transparency is a very big issue. This is a picture I took, it, I took myself. Um, this is your um, uh, chief executive, uh, Eddie Yu, from the HKMA. He came to my office, and this is our canteen uh, at the Bank of Thailand. Normally, we don't ask our, our, our guests to buy their own coffee, but this time we, we made a... Uh, we made a, 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 a uh, we made him buy coffee using his own money, using his, his own FPS, and he was very happy about it as well. So as you can see from his smile, and uh, as you can see from the uh, chart uh, to, 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 to the left, to the right over there, uh, um, the linkage between Thailand and, and Hong Kong is now the fastest growing linkage uh, among the eight linkages that, that we have. Um, you have... Um, uh, over, we have over around uh, 11 million Hong Kong dollars worth of transactions since the law launch in December last year. So only uh, a couple of months um, on, and, and we, all, we, we have around um, 68,000 um, uh, transactions, um, and, and you're number three now. We hope that um, you'll be number two and number one um, in, in the near future as well. Now, um, besides... Um, 
uh, cross-border payment linkages, uh, we do look forward to the future uh, and, and try to do um, uh, innovations on digital money as well. Um, um, but uh, let me talk to you about uh, three projects that we've been doing. Uh, one is Project Nexus. This is, uh, this is a continuation of what we've been doing, the bilateral linkages uh, between Thailand and, and, and other countries like uh, Singapore, uh, Prom Pay Pay Now. We multilateralized this, so instead of having bilateral linkages, uh, each linkage uh, takes about two years to finish, right? But if you have a, um, uh, many um, countries together, uh, it, it, it's better to have a, a uh, multilateral system, and once you plug it in, you can send money to anywhere, uh, any, any country in, in the group. So this is what we've been doing with um, four other ASEAN countries um, uh, with the um, collaboration of the BIS Innovation Hub in Singapore as well. Uh, the second and, and um, third uh, innovation um, projects that, that we've been doing is with um, uh, Hong Kong as well. So uh, one is called uh, Internon Lion Rock. Internon is the highest mountain in, in Thailand, and Lion Rock is, is right here in Hong Kong. So we named this project um, on, on distributed, le tech tech, uh, distributed ledger technology um, uh, based on our, our, our mountains in, in, in our places. And um, based on this project, uh, we are also doing the Project Enbridge, as uh, has been mentioned earlier this morning. Uh, this is a multiple uh, CBDC project um, uh, between Thailand, uh, BOT, HKM, and also PBOC, and the Central Bank of the UAE. So four, four central banks are engaged together in creating a multilateral um, platform for wholesale cross-border payments. So uh, this, is a future, what, this is what the future is going to look like. Now, um, I've been, this is, we are going a uh, whole circle from, from, from the um, uh, first uh, banknote printed by uh, a Hong Kong bank in, in, in Siam, or now Thailand, now to digital payments, uh, to uh, cross-border uh, connectivity, to, to CBDC. So there's a uh, big, big um, connection between um, our peoples and our countries. Let me uh, finish off by saying what lessons learned uh, we can draw from these um, uh, experiences. Um, uh, remember that, that whenever we do uh, anything with technology, uh, it's, it's always uh, used as a means, right? So um, at the end of the day, uh, it's the people who, who matter, and, um, and connecting people is, is, is what we, we, we try to do. And this is why um, our um, innovations are um, mostly user-centered, right? So you use technology to, um, to serve the people to address their pain points. Um, as I mentioned, this is um, a, a screenshot of our prompt pay, pay now um, uh, transaction. Um, it's convenient. You only use the um, mobile phone number, nothing else, right? The system would check for you, do the AML CFT uh, 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 for you, and then uh, you get the uh, rate here and um, it's done within uh, one or two seconds. So convenient, safe. Um, you talk to, we talk to banks to make the fees attractive. Uh, the FX rates are also attractive. And of course, there are multiple use, case, use cases for this. Second um, uh, is the interoperability, uh, right? So um, when we started out um, the QR uh, in Thailand, all the banks would, would have their own QR code, right? This is something that, that what we try to avoid, right? So if you, if you um, have um, a QR of a purple bank, you have to go to uh, a merchant of a purple, or with a purple bank QR, right? So this is something that, that we, we try to avoid and uh, make the whole thing interoperable, right? So this is something that we have achieved um, and uh, avoided fragmentation with a user and merchant uh, agnostic uh, payments uh, within the country. And the third, uh, which is uh, something very, uh, 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 also very important, is inclusiveness. Like financial inclusion is very, uh, very important. Um, we know that, that most of the people um, um, can, can um, 
pay uh, conveniently, but there are people in the society uh, where we would need to reach out to, right? These are migrant workers. These are users without cards, right? These are merchants who are on the street side selling um, uh, street food, but they don't have money to buy the EDC machines to read the cards, but they can print the QR code and, and let anyone uh, pay uh, to them, right? So the, these, are, these are the reasons why we are uh, using um, uh, technology to drive um, financial inclusion as well, right? So uh, let me end uh, by saying that um, whenever you come to Thailand, um, remember that um, uh, you don't need to, 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 to pay cash anymore, right? So take out your phone. And, and, and pay anywhere, uh, where, where, wherever you see a prompt pay sign, uh, and, and then using FES to, uh, with prompt pay uh, makes life as a tourist uh, very convenient. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Kanitha Shen.